On the 4th of August, the Bank of England decided to raise the national interest rate to 1.75%. This is the sixth time in a row that they have done this, and what is even worse is they have no plans on stopping anytime soon. Some economists out there believe that the interest rate has to go above 3% before we could see any improvements, but by the time that happens, the damage could already be done. Which is why today I'm here to set the record straight on why this is all happening, how this is going to affect everybody because no one can avoid it, and most importantly, what are some of the steps that we can take to improve our situations before it's too late. Let's get started. Firstly, why are interest rates on the rise? Well, it's actually really simple. Every single year, our government, whether you like them or not, will set the Bank of England a target inflation rate of 2% that they have to try and maintain. And since the 1990s, we actually did a really good job at keeping this as low as possible. However, now things have definitely taken a turn for the worse. Inflation in the UK is right now currently set to 10.1% and the rising cost of living in this country is almost becoming unlivable. So knowing this, how does bumping up interest rates help us bring inflation down? Well, first things first, the higher the interest rates are, the more expensive it's going to cost you to actually borrow money. The next thing that's going to happen is that you are going to be more encouraged to save money because your banks will be able to offer you a higher rate of interest and both of these combined should result in less borrowing, more saving, and ultimately less spending throughout the country. What this would then do is slow down the rising cost of goods throughout the country, ultimately bringing down inflation. Sounds simple, right? Well, whilst the solution is pretty straightforward, the worry that we have is that we don't actually know how high interest rates are going to go in the future before we actually see that rate start to come down. If we look back to the 1980s, interest rates during this time averaged between 10 and 14%, which is much higher than the levels that they are right now. And whilst the Bank of England predicts that things will never get back to those levels again, they have gone ahead and stated on their own website that they will do what Ever it takes to bring inflation levels back down to their original state. Which is where I'll go next and that is answering the question of how does this actually affect us? Mortgages. In the UK, just under one third of all households will have some form of mortgage and of that third, 75% of those will be locked into a fixed mortgage. Now if you do find yourself within that percentage, then you will not be affected immediately from these rate hikes and it will all depend on when your fixed mortgage actually runs out. However, for those that are now thinking about renewing their mortgage plans, the average mortgage payer should expect to see an increase of 130 to 167 pounds every single month. This doesn't mean you will be paying off your mortgage any quicker. This is just simply more money that you are going to have to pay the bank in pure interest just to borrow money from them. Credit cards. Just like mortgages, borrowing money on your credit card is also going to be more expensive as well. Before the latest rise, the average annual interest rate on overdrafts was just over 20% and for credit, it sat around 18%. And whilst these fees already sound as ridiculous as they are, lenders will now have the power to potentially increase them even more in the future. Financing your car. Now luckily, if you're already in either a PCP or a lease deal, the likelihood is is that interest rate that you locked in, let's say a couple of years back, will be fixed for the entire term of that deal. But if you're in the position which I am where you're looking for a new car, then you could potentially be paying two to three thousand pounds on the average car price without the car changing in value at all. This is purely because interest rates on car loans are going to naturally rise and that's not even taking into consideration the depreciation on a car, but we'll save that for another video. Small businesses. These are probably the people that will be least obvious to be affected but in my opinion I think this one's going to be the most devastating. Like we mentioned the main goal of raising interest rates is to stop people from spending money and if we can imagine people are not spending money then businesses are not going to be making money and we can only imagine the devastating knock-on effect that this could potentially have. Not only will businesses naturally see their sales decrease but they will also be unable to expand due to the lack of funding and some may 
not even survive. This would then have a knock-on effect to job opportunities, it would slow the country's economic growth, which would ultimately put us in a recession if we're not already in one right now. But having said that, rising interest rates isn't just doom and gloom for everyone. Just like everything out there, there will be people out there that will see a positive effect from this rise, and let's get into them right now. Savers. Now, when it comes to your banks and building society savings accounts, the interest that you could earn from these has almost become a thing of the past with banks offering very, very low rates and you having to lock in long-term fixed deals to see any kind of benefit from them. However, with the national base interest on the rise, they could be more tempted to now raise interest rates higher than they ever have in the past 10 or 20 years. But don't get excited too quickly. Research from The Guardian tells us that British banks have passed on the full 0.5% point increase to just two out of their 233 easy access savings accounts so far. This isn't to say that they won't increase things in the future. Some banks actually like to wait a little while before they make that decision. But with this thing, only time will tell. Pensions. These are another product that could see a positive impact on the back of rising interest rates. The reason behind this is because a lot of pensions out there will have a high allocation to things like bonds, which is an investing product that normally sees a positive impact on the back of high interest rates and inflation. But when we look at things, the rise of interest rates is going to affect us all. Some of it can be positive, but for the most of us, it's likely going to have a negative effect on our finances, which leads me to talking about what are some of the things we can actually do about it. Well, firstly, let's start by taking a look at housing because this is probably going to be the most concerning area of the bunch. And let's start with those that are currently in a fixed mortgage. The first thing I would be doing is contacting your mortgage advisor or your lender and actually seeing when that fixed rate actually ends. And hopefully it's a little way off in the future just to give things time to fix themselves. From there, what I would like to do is then go and perform what is called a stress test on your mortgage payments to see if you can cope with any rising rates. This tool that I found on the Barclays website is really good for comparing the current interest rate that you're paying right now in comparison to an interest rate that you could potentially be paying in the future. And then finally, another option for those with mortgages is that you actually have the option to overpay on your mortgage. This will actually help you save on the rising interest rates, but be careful. Most mortgage providers have a 10% overpaying limit, and if you were to breach that, you could potentially be paying thousands of pounds in fees which would be kind of counterproductive so that's a couple of things that you can do if you own a property but what about if you wanted to buy one now one thing that we have always been told by our peers is that you have to own a mortgage you have to buy your own house and whilst a lot of that i would usually agree with the recent rise in interest rates is actually now starting to balance the benefits between renting a home and owning one for yourself this article on the mail online is now actually claiming it's one pound cheaper a month to rent the average home rather than owning it with a 90% mortgage. A great video that you can check out after this one is actually one from my friend Tom over at That Finance Show where he really dives deep into the benefits of both renting versus buying and even if you wasn't interested in that video make sure you drop by and tell him to get a haircut from me. So that's the housing option sorted but what are some of the other ways that we can protect ourselves? Well straight away if you've got the cash to buy things use it. Now one thing people would naturally think just from watching the start of this video is that a good benefit to start doing now is actually saving your money but I kind of disagree. This is because right now inflation is still at 10.1% and there currently isn't a savings account out there despite the national base interest rate rise that gets anywhere close to matching that so no matter what interest savings account that you take out you're still going to be falling way behind the current rate of inflation. I personally have never ever been a fan of holding large amounts of cash in my account but there is one thing that I am really passionate about and one way that you can really benefit from this rise and that is investing. Now I'm not going to sit here and give you any stock tips because at the end of the day I'm not a qualified advisor but one area I would really highly recommend you looking into investing in is things such as banks and brokerage firms. These are the companies that are going to benefit from an interest rate hike because this is going to essentially 
actually allow them to make more money, increase their profit margins, which would essentially increase their share price. Now, whilst I said that holding on to some cash currently still isn't really that beneficial at this moment, one thing that is really important to have if you don't have it already in times like this is an emergency fund. This could be three to six months worth of your monthly outgoing stored in a safe bank account, and this is going to help you weather any mortgage rate increases or maybe even tackle the high energy costs that we're about to face in the UK. But like I mentioned at the start of the video, the only way that we are going to see a drop in interest rates and the cost of borrowing money is if we see that inflation number come down. And realistically, inflation is the thing that we should be most concerned about. In fact, if you wanted to find out how I'm dealing with inflation with my three step simple investing plan, then make sure you check out this video up here. You don't want to miss it. I'll see you in there.